Hello, my dear Force Sensitives. How are you doing today? As you all know, a lightsaber is one of those weapons that is known to pierce through basically anything, any metal or material in Star Wars. It's the basic understanding from the movies that we've seen, but that statement is not entirely true. There are a lot of materials in Star Wars that are resistant to lightsabers, and in this video, I'm going to share 10 of those materials that are, let's say, inert to a lightsaber impact. Before we start, make sure you watch all the way till the end, leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel. That being said, let's start the video. Number 10, ADW Force Electrostaff. It was the beginning of the Clone Wars and General Grievous was going planet to planet overseeing the offensive situation of the Separatist forces. He heard rumor that the Jedi Order would soon dispatch a small group of masters to one of the CIS's newest strongholds. CIS is the Confederacy of Independent Systems, or in other words, the Separatists, the guys Dooku was controlling. Anyways, Grievous was unable to greet the Jedis himself, so he sent a droid. He appointed the mercenary unit ADW-4 to the battalion of B-1 battle droids on the jungle world, hoping that the famed killer would be strong enough to win Grievous some new lightsabers. When AD and Mace Windu eventually faced each other, Windu ignited his purple saber, hoping to strike the droid down as easily as any other Separatist pile of scrap that he had faced in the past, but when he swung his sword toward the mercenary, his blade was met with the crackling noise of an electrostaff. It was able to parry away lightsaber strikes with ease, and Windu lost his first duel with AD. Number 9. Electron Walls you can recall the electron walls, the laser separators that divided the hallways of the Naboo hangar. These electron walls weren't necessarily designed explicitly for defense against Jedi and their weapons, but instead to prevent artillery or heavy troops from reaching important parts of Naboo's defenses. However, as it turns out, these electron walls can defend against slashes of a lightsaber with ease, so if you stand on the other side, you're pretty safe. Number 8. Ultrachrome. In Legends, ultrachrome was a material heavily used in the manufacturing of weapons of war, especially in Starships of the Republic and Sith Empires. During the rise of Exar Kun, ultrachrome was one of the most important resources in fleets of the time. Later, during the rise of the Galactic Empire, ultrachrome fell out of favor in Starships but was used by Inquisitors in their battle attire. Number 7. Votosios Bass's Staff. In one of Exar Khan's earliest entanglements with the dark side, we could say he dueled his fellow Jedi, a Cathar named Silvar. The Cathar were giant lion-like humanoids who not only were physically stronger than most other beings, but also had the neutral weapons that most felines featured, namely razor-sharp claws and massive fangs. While dueling, Silvar unsheathed her claws and slashed the future Sith lore across the face, and the dark side of the Force filled his limbs. He brought his lightsaber down on top of Silvar, nearly ending her life, but in the nick of time, Master Bass slapped Kun's hands with the tip of his quarter staff, causing him to drop his lightsaber. Unable to stop the torrent of anger streaming from his mind, Kun then went on to fight his own Jedi Master. In the ensuing duel, Bass imbued his staff with the Force, allowing it to resist most of Kun's lightsaber strikes. Number 6. Neuranium Neuranium is an extremely powerful material in the galaxy. It is a very dense steel-like substance. It is regarded as one of the most powerful metals in the galaxy. Its original purpose was able to stop dangerous radiation from leaking out of or into whatever it contained. Since it was so powerful, it became a favorite substance for making art and statues. Even Emperor Palpatine himself commissioned the creation of Sith statues out of neuranium. Since neuranium was so dense, if you were to touch the tip of a lightsaber to its surface, it would last quite a while before inevitably melting away. Number 5. Armor Weave Armor Weave is an incredible lightsaber-resistant material, not because it performed better than ultrachrome, but because it was relatively cheap for what it did, most famously worn by bounty hunters and soldiers for hire. You probably have seen Armor Weave a time or two if you've ever read A Boba Fett or Land's Tale. Number 4. Baskar Now, of course, this one you guys know a lot about because of the Mandalorian show. Baskar is also known as Mandalorian Iron. The suits of armor were used by most Mandalorians and also a handful of imposters like the unfortunate Jodo. 
Beskar might not be able to endure thousands of tons of stone and marble falling onto it, but it definitely is mighty enough to deflect a few lightsaber slashes. Number 3. Amphistas Now, these were primary weapons of many used on Vong warriors, and one of the most traumatic things a Republic soldier could face on the battlefield, the Amphistaffs were actually living creatures and looked much like a thickly armored snake. Whenever Vong soldiers used it in battle, they were able to cut through almost anything. They turned the staff towards sometimes they simply used the serpent-like weapon as a sword, and even at others, they tossed it as a long-range weapon that could pierce any armor. They were pretty OP whenever it went up against lightsabers in combat. Not only could the empty staff resist the Jedi's blade power, but they didn't even seem to be phased by it. Number 2. Disc Blade Disc Blade was a weapon that was very similar to Exar Kun's master's Vortaceous Bass Quarter Staff. The Force-sensitive warriors who used the Disc Blade needed to saturate it with Force to make it resistant to lightsaber attacks, but once they did, they were able to endure slash after slash. Number 1. Cortosa Swords Cortosa Swords were a very special weapon, not just because they were lightsaber resistant, but because they could actually turn a lightsaber off if it came in contact with it. Famously used by the Sith millennia ago, in the fabled Sith Swords Cortosis, even managed to find its way into a simple arm-mounted shield which Sith Masters were known to use in combat in the time of the Galactic Republic. Are there any lightsaber-resistant materials that I missed? Hit me up in the comments below! If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one!